Guinness jumps into the pool. He lands pretty hard. And this is not good for his hips. In fact, Maddie's been told by her veterinarian that he shouldn't be jumping into the pool. Whoa. He's trying to save her. Are we swimming over her? He's, she's trying to get away. Okay. Guinness is a 120 pound Labrador. He is very, very heavy. It's one thing for adults to be swimming around, but quite another thing for kids to be swimming around with him, and I actually think it's incredibly dangerous. I can see already on your back there are scratches. Ready? Yep, and on your shoulders and on your back. Oh, yeah. Ay, yay, yay. Look at that. My back is totally scratched. My legs are scratched. Arms, bruises everywhere, just from Guinness trying to hop on you. <laughs> He's trying to find her. Yeah. That looks like it's going to hurt. <laughs> the fact is, though, once he gets in, he seems to get a little bit panicky. And I think that's the reason why he's trying to hold on to people. So if you could take him out and put him outside, then. OK. Take Guinness is bad news around the pool. Um, if he's in the pool, he's going to hurt somebody. And if he's out of the pool behind the fence, then he continuously barks. <laughs> with Guinness barking and with Jovi barking at the fence, it, it's definitely not peaceful. So it's, it's not a relaxing time in our backyard. Then we have Guinness in the pool with his swimming around, drowning people, clawing at people, and then when he has got out of the pool behind the fence, he's barking. Especially for a dog like Guinness, being overweight with his condition plus the hip, you're putting more stress on the organs of the body. He is looking at surgery for his hip. Now, yeah, how do you exercise a dog like Guinness? You've been told by the veterinarian that he shouldn't be jumping in the pool. Right. So why is he jumping in the pool? A few times jumping in the pool, I didn't think is, was really going to matter. This is where we have our disagreements, because she doesn't feel letting him jump a few times is any harm. So I've noticed this. It's not hard not to notice that you and Maddie are at odds. You enable behavior quite a lot. The only way this is going to work is if you guys work together and you're consistent. And that means that, Robin, you follow through and you stick to everything that we put into place. OK. And that means Maddie just lay off a little bit and accept throughout the training process that no one's going to be perfect. The dogs are going to fail at times. Stuff is going to be irritating. But if you deal with it, you're all going to have a much easier life and so are your dogs. So I want to teach Guinness if he barks, game stops. It's known as the removal technique. And it's basically one strike and you're out. To begin with, I had the kids get into the pool. Maddie and Robin were sitting by the pool. And the kids played with a red ball. <laughs> Up. Let's go. Any time that Guinness barked, I put a slip leash over him and took him inside. I waited inside for a couple of seconds, and then I brought him out again. It'll never work. I'm still apprehensive in Victoria's removal training as to whether it's really going to work. We have so many noises and other neighbor dogs barking. I don't think we'll ever get our dogs to stop barking. Up. Up. Let's go. After just two more tries, Guinness is catching on. Quiet. Good. All right, Robin, I'd like you to take over from me. With Robin on his side, Guinness again gets excited. Boy. But after just one more trip inside, he gets the idea. It's going to be a much more fun summer when my friends are over swimming, because Boy. the dogs will not bark, so it'll be nice and quiet. The tricky stuff is it's going to be when you're all in the pool, and then there's no one there to remove him. Right. Maddie and Robin don't really have faith in each other, and they don't have faith in their dogs. But their dogs have shown and proven how quickly they've learned. 
it's gonna take some time. But I believe if Robin and I are consistent with the training, it will work. Because Guinness has so many medical problems, I wanted to get somebody along who is an expert in canine hydrotherapy and knows exactly how much swimming he should be doing. This is Leslie Gallagher. She's a canine re rehabilitation practitioner. Hi. Hi, I'm Robin. Nice to meet, nice to meet you. And Maddie. Hi, and nice here's to meet Connor. you. Hi, Connor. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Before Leslie came, she had spoken to Guinness's veterinarian and got a lot of information about him. And then she was able to get more information by talking to Robin and Maddie. Okay, do we know how much he weighs? 108. 108? He does need to lose a little bit of weight. One pound of fat for a dog is the equivalent to about five pounds for us. So even if he were 30 pounds overweight, that's like you or I having to lose 150 pounds. It's a massive amount for a dog. And what happens when you get a dog who's got clearly quite a bit of um, of arthritic problems, you want to reduce the load off of his joints as much as you possibly can. So literally every pound that you can get off him is going to make him feel better and he'll live a lot longer. What has also happened is that he has a partial ACL tear. You're aware of that. Do you know when he tore out his knee? He did it running around the pool, jumping in. OK, so sliding on the cement. But he's also got a disc at L4 and L5 in his back. Are you aware of that? No. No. Okay. I was really sad that there were more issues. I'm thinking that everything is really, really bad at this point. Now, Leslie begins her physical evaluation of Guinness. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of measurements. OK, so he's two inches different. He's 21 inches on this side and 19 inches on that side. The problem with that is he's putting so much weight on his right leg because he's trying to not use that leg that he's going to tear out this leg. After evaluating Guinness, what I have found today is that his injuries are consistent with a really severe hip dysplasia and a terrible ACL tear. So he's got some poor orthopedic problems. So I want Leslie to be able to show you how we can do some swimming with Guinness in a positive way rather than a negative way. So if we can get into the pool, mm -hmm. that would be right. fabulous. That'd be okay, right. let's go then. Come on, Guinness. You need help? Such a good boy. Any swimming that needs to be done has to be done in a calm manner and definitely no jumping in the pool. In order for Guinness not to panic in the water, Leslie and I put a float jacket on him so that he would feel much safer and he could swim calmly. All right, come on, sweetheart. We're going to go in really slowly and really politely, right? Good boy. Good boy. So what I want you guys to do when you're walking him in, which we'll practice, is holding onto both ends of the, of the float coat. What okay. a good boy. Oh, my gosh. And I just want to support him. See his leg? He's not even, He's not even kicking not even it. Thin. See how he's not even kicking he's that not leg? not even kicking. Oh. oh, you poor baby. He's not even using his back legs to swim. His hips are so bad that he can't even use them to keep him afloat. So it's obviously gotten much worse it's than gotten, I haven't yeah. noticed. You don't until somebody you're observing from afar. Right. right. Maddie thought that Guinness was trying to save people in the pool by swimming up to them, clawing at them. But he wasn't. I think he was just panicking. There's a lot that they can do with this absolutely. swimming, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. He can, we can definitely make this dog a lot better with okay. physical therapy and, and diet and exercise, absolutely. What I would most recommend for him is daily sessions in the pool to build up his cardio fitness, to build up some of his muscle atrophy so he's not so weak in the back. It breaks my heart to see a young, healthy dog like that swimming and unable, completely unable to use his back legs. Rule number one, no more jumping in. Ever, 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 ever. Only walking in down the steps. Could we have either Maddie or Robin come in and you coach them Absolutely. through how to hold, Absolutely. how to guide? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. First of all, Maddie came into the pool. And you're guiding him. There you go. There we go, buddy. Robin also took Guinness around the pool. You always want to keep him from parallel to you. There you go. Good, Good boy. boy. Yeah. Yeah. And the nice thing about this was, Connor so wants to swim with her dog, and she hasn't been able to. Now, in this calm environment, she can. So, at the end of the day, this is, this is a serious condition, and, but I think the swimming is gonna help. And instead of it being crazy, being calm like this, I think not only is he gonna benefit, but you guys are gonna benefit too. All right, so I think that's great. Thank you, Leslie. You're so welcome. Fantastic. For the first time, swimming with Guinness has become a calming, relaxing experience. Guinness is really loving the pool training. I think he feels a lot calmer in the pool. That's a good boy. Yeah. The pool therapy's going really well with Guinness. Come on. Guinness has lost a few pounds, 
and we're confident that he will lose more weight as time goes on. Look at Guinness go. It's so great to know that Maddie and Robin were able to come together and make life better for themselves and their dogs.